Hello everyone, welcome to Skyly.com. My name is Dr. Divan and the topic of the lecture today is vasculitis and granulomatosis. First of all, we're going to talk about what the vasculitis word stands for. Vasculitis is actually uh, inflammation and destruction of the vessel wall. We're going to talk about which vessels are prone to it. We're going to talk about whether it's going to affect the small size vessels, whether it's going to affect the medium size vessel, whether it's going to affect the large size vessels. What are those pathological names for it? If it affects a small vessel, what is it called? What if it, what if it affects a microscopic vessel, what is it called? What if it affects the large size vessels, what is it called? And uh, how do we go for the pathogenesis of them? How do we define them? How, what are the clinical manifestations of them? So first of all, we're going to start with granulomatosis with polyangitis which is also called Wegener's granulomatosis. In this topic, we're going to talk about what's the pathogenesis of it, how does a granuloma is formed inside of it, what's the pathophysiology of granuloma, why does it being formed, why is it being formed. Then we're going to talk about its pathophysiology, we're going to talk about what clinical features does it come with, we're going to talk about actually the stages of disease, stages of Wegener's granulomatosis because in order to combat the disease we have to know the stages of them. We're going to talk about its five stages which are uh, uh, very basic in treating the patient. Those stages are limited. We're going to talk about primary, we're going to talk about secondary, we're going to talk about active disease of uh, Wegener's and then we're going to talk about what refractory stage of this disease mean. Then we're going to talk about what are the treatment options available. And then we're going to talk about uh, whether we are going to find it in the blood or not, on which basis we diagnose the patient with it. Then we're going to talk about if a patient went through the treatment and attained the remission that it wanted, how do we maintain the remission? How do we stop the patient from falling back into the relapse? Next on we have microscopic polyangitis. So we're going to talk about what kind of vessels does microscopic polyangitis affects with its vasculitis versus the pathophysiology of it and how do we see it on a slide if we go for it. Next on we have eosinophilic granulomatosis. We're going to talk about what does eosinophilic doing here? Why does it called eosinophilic granulomatosis? It's also called Chilgstraw syndrome. You must have heard that name even if not this name, because it's very difficult to remember. We're going to talk about what's the pathophysiology of it. We're going to talk about how does it affect uh, the whole immune system. We're going to talk about what are the clinical manifestations of it. We're going to talk about asthma in it. We're going to talk about uh, all the uh, treatment options we have for it. And uh, we'll cover this whole uh, pathophysiology in a slide. Next on we have necrotizing sarcoid granulomatosis. We're going to talk about which vessels does necrotizing sarcoid granulomatosis is going to affect. Uh, unlike other vessels, it's going to affect small to medium vessels and in some cases in large vessels. We're going to talk about which cells are being involved in this. We're going to talk about what other pathologies are involved, which other pathologies are accompanied by it. We're going to talk about the clinical uh, clinical features of the patient. We're going to talk about what pathologies does a person who is suffering from necrotizing sarcoid granulomatosis uh, is supposed to get. And then we're going to talk about what are the treatment options for it. For watching the complete lecture or for watching other variety of lectures, please subscribe to sky.com. Thank you for watching.